What is going on everyone and welcome to some special Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind videos. Now before I start, I wanted to say that I do personally have some permission from Zoss to create some videos, uh, but they are limited in terms of what I'm allowed to show, so I can't show like new dungeons, the story, and all that stuff. But I can show you the character and warden, all the abilities. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This is my warden. I'm not really optimized with like gear since I actually play on the North American server and today I'm recording this. They wiped the North American and let it, uh, they like transferred everyone from EU. So I had to make a new character and that's when I got permission for all this. So let's start off with the class. We're going to be looking at all the abilities and then the passives. So in my opinion, animal companions are more of your DPS abilities. Green Balance is more for healers, and Winter's Embrace is more for like movement, tanking, and like ice damage, I guess you can say. So, but the best thing about this is you can use whatever you want, and it like some things that work better for very situational things, but ultimately you can just play around with whatever you want. So, let's start off with the Animal Companions skill line, and we'll talk about everything. So the Feral Guardian is your ultimate for the slime. The bear, everyone knows what this is. We've seen it in the trailers. So let's show you what it is. So before I start, it doesn't um, cost anything to summon the bear. But if you have 75 ultimate or more, it does extra damage. And it, the damage it deals is based off of magic. But if you are a stam character, I do believe it still works for you as well. But it is more um, magic. Oh yeah, keep in mind that everything I show you, this is still the PTS. Um, so that means everything could change. And for the most part, I think the skills are going to be the same. But like some numbers might be tweaked when you see it. So that's what it is. And keep in mind, your gear also changes the white numbers you see. And I don't have the best gear on this character because I just used the template. Whatever. But anyway, I wanted to just show you the skills. So Pharaoh Guardian, this is what it looks like. If you don't have ultimate, you can still cast it. But if you do have 75 ultimate, um, then you could... It does just does more damage. So this is what the bear looks like. And then when you have the morphs, we have the Eternal Guardian. And then we have the Wild Guardian. So in my opinion, I played around a little bit with this. The Eternal Guardian is essentially uh, an infinite bear. So when it dies, it just respawns automatically while the wild guardian just increases physical damage so in other words do you want to not have to recast your bear multiple times if it dies or do you want more physical damage uh personally i think just um having the wild guardian for more damage is generally the better idea but um ultimately it's up to you they actually do look a little bit different whenever you um whatever morph you have so I think one is like a gray bear and one is a brown one. But I like the Wild Guardian more because really, realistically, casting only takes like two seconds. And uh, for the most part, with the patch like two times, or I don't know, was it one Tamriel? That pets usually survive better or they have more health or something like that. So they don't die easily. And Wild Guardian just increased damage and... You see the little mark right here on the bear? That's like uh, the morph version, I believe. So that's the Wild Guardian. I don't really know how good it is in terms of like end game trials, but uh, if you're using it in dungeons or just like solo content, I think it's fine. So next we have Dive. This is our first ability. Um, you summon the Cliff Racer and just bombing the enemy with damage. So we're going to put this on our main bar, and then I'll show you the morphs. So the first one is Cutting Dive. Now, we have additional physical damage, and then when you morph it, it turns into a stamina ability. And the scales off weapon damage and stam. So if you are a stam user, you get this one. Um, and this one, obviously, stays as a magic one. So what you're going to be doing is looking at what you play. Obviously, if you are magic, then you don't get this one. And it deals more damage if you are magic, so which we are. So we're using Screaming Cliff Racer. There is actually a new uh, target dummy. It's a target centurion. Essentially, this one 
is based off of like dungeon and trials so like the robust one is like a veteran boss and health as like 51 million but anyway the way this works is you cast your ability the thing just goes down and bombs it and if you like double cast it like you can't animation cancel it so you just have to let it go through which is um not as bad it does more than more damage than this but just keep in mind my gear is not like super optimized for all this but that's essentially how it works. You just call it down and it just bombs them with damage. It's kind of cool. Not sure how it'll do. But uh, enemies at a longer range. So if you are longer, it does slightly more damage. I don't know what the full range is. Yeah, I think that's the max range for it. But anyway, next we have Scorch. It is a shulk that attacks after three seconds. And then you call it into the ground on an area. And it just does damage. So this one converts it to a stamina ability. Once again, if you're a stamina, you might want to use this one. And then this one has a stun effect, which is kind of good. But um, I'm not really sure about this since it's only stunning one enemy. But if you're a magic, this is the only choice you have. So this is what it looks like. You call it into the ground and three seconds later, it just pops up and then just does damage. I'm not really sure too much about this skill. It seems like something that's slow paced But if it's used to stun enemies, it might be good Just call it and then you like switch your rotation and do something else for it So uh, not really sure it just seems a little bit slow for me, but it could be good It might do a lot. So maybe in the future who knows next we have swarm unleash a swarm and Attacks and enemies does magic damage over time. So it's a dot and this is what the morphs are. Uh, fetch your infection, which is casting a second time, increases the damage, so you have to double cast, essentially. Or this one is an extended AoE, and it spreads to new enemies. To be honest, I'm not really sure which one is the better morph. I think Fetcher, just because it does uh, more damage over, like, if you cast again. So the way it works, it would be, like, you cast, and then you cast it again, and just does more over time. It seems kind of interesting for me, but um, I feel like this one might be used a lot. I'm not sure which morph is the best one, but I just like Fetcher a little bit more. And then Betty Netch is our next one. I do believe this one's going to be used a lot by every Warden because it restores magic over time and increases spell damage for about 24 seconds, 22, um, when maxed out. So having a lot more sustain and extra spell damage is generally going to be a good thing. I do believe you have to... I'm not sure. Actually, we'll test it. Hold on. But anyway, the morphs are Blue Betty and Bull Netch. Um, so when you summon it, it's either going to be blue or green. And if you are a stamina user, you're going to get Bull Netch. And if you are um, magic, I believe you are just going to get the Blue Betty. So... Uh, yeah, that's really straightforward. This is what it looks like for cast that. It just summons, and then you see the little blue line. This is how you know you're uh, getting your resources. So that one's pretty straightforward. It just restores stamina and gives you, or restores resources, depending on which one you're quick, and increases your damage done. So Falcon Swiftness is our next one. It looks cool. Can't switch these in combat. Oh my goodness. All right, we're out of combat. So Falcon Swiftness is our next one. Um, you gain major expedition, increased movement speed, and increases your stamina recovery. Um, so Birds of Prey increases the damage while active, which might be good. And Deceptive Predator gain a dodge chance when active, which is also pretty good. So I think the Deceptive one is going to be used a little bit more in PvP, while Birds of Prey is more for pve that's just my opinion could be completely wrong and uh this is more of a stamina ability but if you are magic and you're using this one <clears throat> i think this one's the better choice and obviously the other one actually just does straight up scale off stamina so what it looks like is this glowing wings that are kind of cool and then it's kind of like the vicious ophidian set where you get the speed bonus except it's blue and it looks really nice so that's what it looks like and uh, yeah, so with the passives, um, bond with nature. When your animal companions are killed, you get health or unsummoned. And when it's maxed out, it's doubled. Uh, activating an animal companion gives you ultimate. And then obviously when it's not on cooldown, 
You don't. Increase Magicka and Stamina. So if your pet is out and you have the infinite pet, you're going to have uh, permanent recovery. And this one increases the damage. So for each slotted. So you have like... If you have everything, you're going to get a huge bonus. But uh, realistically, having all of them like this is probably not a good idea. So that's the Animal Companions tree. Next, we're going into the Green Balance, which is more of the healer one. I do believe the Secluded Grove needs to be tweaked in terms of the visual animation. So this is our ultimate. Uh, if you ever played World of Warcraft, it's kind of like Tranquility. Um, you have a huge AoE circle. If you're standing in it, you get healed. And yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Enchanted Forest versus the Healing Thicket. Um, healing continues after the ability ends versus gain ultimate when healing low health enemies. I do believe healing thicket is going to be the better choice just because obviously if the healing continues after your healing ability ends, that's kind of good. So we're going to use this one and hold on actually, let me see. Ultimate's not up yet, so we're just going to gain our ultimate. All right, now it's up. One thing I think they should tweak is the animation because it's kind of obnoxious. I've seen people use it in the trials and I don't know. It's just like I've actually died to it once because like someone casted it right behind me and it's like a tree grew in my face and I just couldn't see anything. But like this is what it looks like. Yeah, so you can see how that's kind of obnoxious if someone just casts that and you're standing right behind it. And tough situations for that. But uh, overall... It's an AoE heal. It's not bad, but I wish they could probably tweak the animation a little bit. So fungal growth is like seed a large area of mushrooms that heal you. So kind of like healing springs in a way. The morphs are um, enchanted growth. that affects the like affected targets gain resources, regeneration, and this one is enemies or your allies are healed for more and it costs stamina while this is the magic morph so this is what we're using this is what it looks like you just summon mushrooms under you it's kind of weird i don't really understand it's kind of like combat prayer in a way except it's not too uh visually i think they have to be in the line when that happens so healing seeds is our next one or healing seed um summon the field of flowers and one over time, allies may affect or activate the synergy, and that's what it is. So this is the stint or magic one, and the ability can be activated for an instant heal. So it's kind of like, what is it? The Ritual of Retribution from the Templar abilities. Essentially that, and they can activate a synergy, and they get instant heals, or enemies receive less healing. I do believe Budding Seeds is just going to be the obvious choice for most people i don't really see the other one being used much maybe in pvp but i just think budding seeds is going to be the better morph so this is what it looks like it is it does have a cooldown on it a little bit so you it's like an aoe toss it down and then people stand in it yep pretty good yeah living vines is growth to vines and allies in front of you Restores their health one every second for a small amount of like health. So I don't know how good this one is, but just leeching vines applies minor life steal, and this one is heals when the effect ends. So I think leeching vines might be a little bit better, just because um, minor life steal. Like not only does it heal, but if it's on someone else, uh, they get to gain health back or something whenever. Uh, they attack as well, which is the life steal part of it. All right, so next we have Lotus Flower, uh, causing a light attack to uh, restore health and heavies to restore more health. So essentially, if you light or heavy weave, you get more stuff and health back. It's kind of cool, actually. Caster gains spell critical and weapon critical. So that's those are the morphs of your stamina. You get this one. I don't know why you'd be using this one as a stamina but whatever and then lotus blossom if you're magica you get this one let's see let's put it on our ability bar and show you what it looks like the flower it appears under you that looks kind of weird but 
Okay. You get a uh, spell critical for 20 seconds. I do believe there are other things that could replace it, but you know, if you don't, if you like playing solo or don't have self buffs or you only have self buffs, this is going to be something you use. And nature's grasp is swing to an allied target and heal them for like whatever number over time. The morph is heals instantly instead of over time, which might be pretty good. And this one also heals the caster. So essentially, pre-morph, you swing to a target ally and heal them for it. And the morph for this one is it also heals you or it heals instantly instead of over time. Um, as a healer, I feel like it really depends on your play style and how good you are, which affects your morph. I think if you are doing a trial and you have multiple healers, um, you would just choose to heal instantly over time. And you won't really need the caster one. So Bursting Vines, I do believe, is one for like slightly better players. Since there's no other person here, I can't actually use the ability. So, um, yeah. The, what is it? Accelerated Growth. If you're healing an enemy under 40%, you just gain like major mending and increase your healing done. So you're obviously going to get two of these. Well, actually, we're just going to max all of them. So let's just do that. And then the next one, when healing an ally with a green balance ability, so pretty much anything in this tree, uh, you gain 250 magic or stamina, restores your lowest resource pool. So essentially, you're going to want to be lower. Like, for example, if you were looking at my health bar right now, I would want to be at like lower than 12,000 magic, and then it would be healing me. If I wanted magic, I'd have to be lower than 12,000. If anything else, I'd be gaining stamina. And uh, for every like heal ability or green uh, balance tree, you just get um, increased healing done. So that's very strong. And then when you heal an ally, it grants them minor toughness, increases their max health, which is very strong. All the passives here are very good. Definitely something to be working on. Usually, I would say... Passives aren't really as important early game as the skills are, but I think these are very strong. So let's go into our um, Winter's Embrace tree and look at everything here. So I do believe these are more like tanky and or slowing effects. So let's go into our Sleet Storm. Uh, it's kind of like the best way to describe it right now, Sleet Storm is like hurricane the sorcerers have and the morphs are permafrost or northern storm uh, when you have this you have max magicka well slotted which is pretty interesting and damaging nearby enemies will stun them so i think both of these morphs are very solid max magic if you're using some sort of pet build might be a little bit better because some pets uh scale off magic damage or magic so uh, having this one with like i don't know um necropotence that set is, might be good or if you are not using any pets or anything then uh damaging nearby enemies will stun them it really just depends what you're doing if you're like in a trial or dungeon usually your tank will be pulling things which is kind of why i noted that these are more tank skills so uh damaging them i think this one might be good so i don't think i have enough oh hold on let's just go get it Slowly we'll get our ult done. Almost there. Alright, there it is. So the Sleet Storm, this is what it looks like. It's kind of like Hurricane in a way. And then, obviously, if things are standing in it, they get stunned. So, kind of cool, actually, but I don't know about that one. Next, we have Frost Cloak. Um, wrap a thick cloak of ice around you, essentially, like the bound armor thingy that you have, sorcerers have. It looks a little bit different. You gain resistances, and, yeah, I think it just straight out beats the sorcerer one, which is kind of weird, because balance... But anyway, reduce cost in the longer radius versus gain minor protection. Um, I do believe that 
the Frost Cloak expansive one might be a little bit better. Um, whereas if you were playing solo, this one, the Ice Fortress might be good. But if you're playing in a group one, uh, reduced cost, larger radius is the better choice. So we'll show you what this one looks like. You see the armor? You, it's like glowing a little bit. And that's what it looks like. So next we have Impaling Shards. This one is like you call up ice shards out of the ground. It's actually really cool looking. So um, skewer enemies with ice shards and reduces the movement speed for three seconds. So the morphs are immobilizes enemies, which they should already be slowed and stuff, but it immobilizes and slows them. And then this one summons that targeted location around you and scales off Max Magicka. So, to be honest, I think the Winter's Revenge might be the better choice um, based on the damage, but uh, immobilizes enemies. That really doesn't seem like it's going to do much. Maybe this is a PvP morph, and I'm just not seeing it. But I just think for PvE, Winter's Revenge is the better choice. So the way this works is you cast down. You just pick your location, and it summons shards out of nowhere like this. Kind of cool, actually. Maybe they could like make the animation or the shards a little bit smaller, but uh, I like it. Next, we have Arctic Wind. Envelop yourself when Winter's Wind healing for 10% of max health instantly and additional healing over time. So the morphs are Polar Wind and uh, Arctic Blast. This one just deals uh, frost damage to nearby enemies versus heals nearby allies. And in my opinion, I'm not really sure which one is the better morph. These are both like solid ones. But um, I think most people are going to choose the Polar Wind just because healing someone else, making sure they don't die is generally a good thing. So this is what it looks like. Just cast it around you, and then if someone's around you, I guess they get healed a little bit more too. So next we have Crystallized Shield. Um, spinning Ice Shield around you. That's what it looks like. And restores, like it absorbs and restores magic. And the shield breaks after three projectiles, so we're going to put that on here. And the morphs are Shimmering Shield versus Crystallized Slab. And this one shoots projectiles, and this one you gain magic or ultimate on successful absorbs. So in my opinion, I think I like the Shimmering Shields a little bit more just because ultimate gain is very strong as very all the ultimates here are very situational. So I think just having the ultimate is better than the additional like 2,000 damage. Um, so having ultimate usually means more damage than the additional like whatever So this is what it looks like you see look around my character. There's going to be some like Frost shields around me for a few seconds. It's only three seconds So you have to like recast multiple times, but if you get hit a lot it absorbs that And then our final ability is called frozen gate now This one is not really used for damage while it does do damage but um hold on let's get this out of here cannot swap these in combat i'm out of combat all right i'm out of combat so this one is a frozen gate it's kind of interesting actually in terms of like something we've never seen before in this game so enemies deal reduced damage versus you can pull in or like if your ally takes a synergy it teleports them to you um now it's not actually as broken as you might think it is because it, the radius is five meters which means like even in pvp or battlegrounds um you can't just like pull someone across the map to you so it's not that bad but um frozen device enemies deal reduced damage so honestly both morphs are good but this is more of a pvp frozen retreat and then Frozen Device is more PvE, and I do more PvP. So essentially, there's going to be a circle underground, toss it, and then the enemies are going to be, like, they do less damage. I think it's less damage. Um, but yeah, so you want to, like, cast this on enemy areas or mobs. If everything's getting pulled into a circle, that's what you're going to be doing. 
So with that said, let's look at our passive. Let's max everything out first so I can show you the uh, double defect. So increase the chance of, of applying shield to enemies with Winter's Embrace ability. So pretty much any of these abilities, 200% um, chance to apply a chilled effect to them. And then with this one, you just straight up get physical and spell resistance. So this one's a very strong one. Resistances are always good. So I think regardless, most people are going to have at least one skill on for here. So you're going to get some uh, reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you. So this is strong both in PvE and PvP. So this is going to be a must get. And increases your physical and frost damage by 6%. It's straight up flat damage. Very good. So yeah, that's been all of the um, Warden abilities. Um, so hopefully, let me know what you thought of these, actually. Some of these are very strong, in my opinion. They're probably going to get somewhat tweaked in the future. But uh, for the most part, I think I am going to play... If I were to switch to a tank, I'd probably use a few of these abilities. The Expansive Cloak is good. Permafrost is alright. Winter's Revenge. I don't think I'd use Shimmering Shield much. Or Frozen Retreat. But uh, the other ones are pretty good. In terms of the things I want to see change is probably the animation for this one. Just because it's kind of obnoxious, actually, if you just look at it. Like, what if what happens if I'm standing right here and I can't see an enemy? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe you guys don't care at all, but... I've died to it once, and uh, that just annoyed me. But uh, everything else is pretty good. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video for probably like the new house tours. Um, just showing you what all the new houses look like. So if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button. When Morrowind officially launches, I will definitely be covering it. We'll be doing the storyline and all that stuff, but I can't show you that now, of course. And actually, it's in the beta, so half of it's kind of, like, not even done yet. So I can't even do it even if I wanted to. So thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.